Jamie Dimon, the CEO of J.P. Morgan Chase and Company, said that the U.S. economy is facing unprecedented dangers and he is ready for catastrophic changes. In his annual letter to shareholders, the CEO of the country's largest bank was most enthusiastic about the economy's health. Consumers and companies have plenty of cash, salaries are rising, and the economy is swiftly recovering from the pandemic slump. While consumer confidence has dipped, Mr. Diamond believes that soaring spending in the most relevant is the most relevant indicator. Arise business anchor and analyst Rota Sodiri joins us now to discuss these business updates from across the world. Hello and welcome, Rotis. Great to have hey, you. Hey, Newsday crew. Nice How are you guys doing? We're good. Doing Fantastic. Right. So where do we begin? Where do you want to start? Well, let's start with the story of the U.S. markets as yeah. we open the Tuesday trading session. Yeah, so the futures were pointing at a lower open. That is because uh, there's still a little bit of uncertainty as far as the markets are starting up. Um, oil prices are going up, though, and that's because the Europeans, uh, there was, I think, a NATO briefing earlier on. There's a special, I think, U.N. Uh, gathering on Ukraine and Russia that's supposed to take place. Oil prices were climbing because it's expected that more sanctions are going to be um, headed towards uh, Russia's way. Also, there is still, of course, inflation fears in the United States. Um, if as inflation goes up, cost of goods and services go up, um, disposable income for the average American gets squeezed. And that also affects things like tech stocks uh, and, and other, other um, equities. So that's what I think when we see the markets open, it might open a bit lower um, today. That's, what, that's what's happening with the markets. Traders are a bit, they're a bit skittish uh, mm. as far as things are concerned there mm. because of global markets and uh, because of um, geopolitical tensions and other issues. Understandable. Yeah, um, yeah, can you yeah. tell us about the market sentiment around this yield curve inversion? Yes, this is a, this is Aaron. This is fascinating stuff. This, <laughs> yield, <laughs> this yield curve. Okay, so this is your screen. Take a look at this. Right, you're looking at U.S. Treasury yields as of 10:40 p.m. Eastern yesterday. Now, the yellow 2.4 percent is the two-year Treasury bonds. Right. The 10-year is at 2.39%. This is called an inversion. An inversion means that the yield on a shorter 10-year security, that is the two-year bond, is paying more than a 10-year bond, which is a longer tenor. So essentially, a shorter tenor two-year bond, which would mature in two years where you get your money back, is paying more than a 10-year. That means that investors have a more short-term outlook on the U.S. economy than long-term. So now, uh, J.P. Morgan, I might get to him in a second. He's saying that he has, you know, he's worried about the U.S. economy. Deutsche Bank just put out a note saying that they're expecting maybe a recession in like a couple years' time. Okay. If the two-year bond is paying more than the 10-year, it means that investors have a less favorable outlook look on the long-term prospects of the U.S. economy than short-term. So that inversion has been happening. It's been going back and forth. I think as of today, a few minutes ago, it was 2.46 versus 2.37 or so. So it's back and forth. So this is a metric that I use. However, however, on the flip side of this, you're not just going to use treasury bonds to determine how well the U.S. economy is going to be doing. There are other metrics that are out that suggest that things are going well. Wages are up. The U.S. economy is creating jobs. People are spending more money as far as consumer um, um, retail spending is concerned. So there's that to look at. There's also the inflation matter. So the thing is, it's a pot of soup with lots of meats that's uh, <laughs> tasting differently. So you can't really say things are going in one particular way. But this is a metric that a lot of folks are looking at. They, it's... it's, it's you know, for us nerds in the business, it's really fascinating stuff, I promise. I promise. It really is. We Aaron. All right. Okay. <laughs> let's keep it in the U.S. Okay. Um, let's talk about Elon Musk. We yeah. know that he's taking a seat on the board of Twitter. And yeah. what are the implications? He's a maverick pie excellence. Let's put it He's a way. genius. Elon Musk is a genius. Um, but he's also a very divisive, volatile character. He has been, so Twitter said that Elon Musk cannot own more than 14.9% as far as shares are concerned. So they're limiting how many shares he can hold because the more shares you hold, the more control you have over the right. board, right? So he had 9.25% gain, uh, sorry, 9.25% position. Now they're saying max 14.9. This is Parag Agrawal who took over from Jack Dorsey. He took over in November of 2021. He's the new CEO. And as you can see in his second tweet, he said Elon is both a passionate believer and intense critic of Twitter. 
Now, the reason Elon has been putting out polls saying that Twitter is the market square of communication. So Twitter, you know, th there's a debate about Twitter and free speech. You know, Trump was kicked off Twitter a mm -hmm. while back. And so Elon believes that changes need to happen at the company and that basically Twitter needs to allow more free speech. So there might be changes coming with him being on the board. But Twitter's board has some heavy weights on it. There are some big time business mavericks on that board. So he's not just going to walk in there and think he can change things. But he's been looking at the algorithm. He's been looking at whether or not there should be an edit button. There should be downvoting, a number of things. So you might see with Park with Paraga Gual welcoming him with open arms. As far as Aaron's question is concerned, implications, you might see changes to Twitter. But again, a board is like us here. We're four people on the board. So it could be three against one, two, two, or so on and so forth. That's how things are going to work out. But it's an interesting deal. He's basically puts his money where his mouth is. He thinks changes need to happen at Twitter. He's bought shares. Now he's on the board and he can, he can have his say. So it's big time. Wow. That's so let's time. talk about Jimmy Demon's cushion and the U.S. economy. Is it well-founded? Right, yeah. So remember what I was saying about that yield curve inversion and, you know, what uh, traders are looking at. So, yeah. So Diamond, now again, this is the, the mix. Uh, you know, he said on the one hand, the U.S. economy is strong. It's creating jobs. Wages are up. Not quite keeping up with inflation, but things are good. But on the flip side, he's, his main worry is that the combination of inflation and the war in Ukraine, you put those together with commodity prices rising, they are, they are, they are headwinds that the U.S. economy um, is facing and is what could cause issues uh, down the line. So on the one hand, you've got economic metrics that are healthy for the United States, but on the other hand, you've got these geopolitical tensions. In Look, Americans in Arizona, Texas, California, border states with Mexico, they're driving into Mexico to buy cheaper fuel. The mm -hmm. Mexicans just said that they were going to stop subsidizing fuel in those border <laughs> states because <laughs> Americans are coming to take advantage of that. So they should put up a wall. Well, hey, so, so, so there's that and there's all these other things happening. So it tells you what's going on in the United States right now. Things, economic metrics say one thing, but then if you ask the average American, fuel prices are high, it's squeezing their pockets. That's why um, um, Joe Biden said they're going to release you know, oil into the markets over the coming days, but that also has some some complications, you know, with, with respect to how long it's going to take to get the oil out of the reserves and then actually get that to um, to U.S. consumers. So it's a big miss. But Diamond is cautious because you know there's just so much going on right now. Huh. Well, you know, always learn a whole lot whenever we're in the studio hey, with you. Hey, hey, we love it. We love it. Thank and I'm, you. And I'm next at three o'clock. You are. So we're yeah. going to let you go. Thank you so much for <laughs> coming right. in and making Thank some you. sense of those business headlines. All right, appreciate it. All right.